So the first question is like, what is trig and what is it used for? And the real answer is a ton of stuff. Like trig, we introduce it here because it has a lot of different applications in different real world environments, right? So originally, and if you have seen this, kind of like around triangles and construction, especially right triangles. And we'll talk about that. In this case, when you talk about right triangle trig, the way trig is initially defined is it tries to define a relationship, a function between kind of the angles in a triangle and the length of the sides of the triangle. So like this is some very basic, like if you have ever done those like ladder problems where it's leaning against the fence or anything like that. They're like bas very basic kind of like what is the world? How can we like talk about these relationships? When you move into trig functions like sine, cosine, and all of that stuff, especially sine and cosine, these what we call wave functions, they're used extensively in electrical engineering and in signals analysis. Right, so anything that has a wave form is usually modeled by some combination of these sine or cosine functions. Um, they're also used in, uh, so signals analysis. Early on they were used in compression screen, um, compression schemes to try and get rid of kind of like noise. If you think about getting rid of like noise in any sort of audio, it's the same thing about any sort of data where they were using sine and cosine functions to represent data and get rid of stuff that was really not that important to compress data and like transfer it in um, less amount of space. Um, there's a great book out of mathematical biology called SYNC about how these trig functions are used to kind of model um, periodic or repetitive patterns in kind of natural biology. So in the SYNC book, it talks um, quite a bit about just kind of natural, your kind of um, body rhythms of waking and sleeping and all of that stuff and how that can be modeled using trig functions as well. So there's a wide variety, and like this, this is the list that I came up with while brainstorming like an hour before class. Is that okay? So like there's an insane list of things that people do with trig. It's very, very widely used because it's based fundamentally in kind of what people observed about the real world. Okay, so when we use trig, trig is oriented around a different unit of measure. So we have to talk about units of measure before we get into trig. Right, and so you can use the um, kind of the normal way of measuring angles, but trig is a lot about angles. So we have to talk about how we're going to measure them. So one of the ways we measure angles is with degrees. In this case, and I'll remind you, like there are 360 degrees in a circle, right? If you don't kind of remember, that's from I think the Babylonians had something about 60s and versions of 60s and that's where the 360 is just a convention where they were like it's about 360 days in the year and we're going to use that to represent this whole circle like that's it's they just named they were like let there be it was a godlike move let there be 360 degrees in the circle that is what happened right it has no basis in the natural world um okay and, or in a right angle I'll just remind you in case like just, this is just a review because I don't know how many of you do kind of angle stuff in your spare time as a hobby. So 90 degrees in a right angle, right? So there are 90 degree things in squares or in right triangles. This notation when you have a little square means this 90 degree angle. Is that okay? Okay. So the more natural organic measure of degree of um, angles is called radians. 
And so, and radiance really comes, we use them in right triangles, but it really originates out of like a circle. So if I have this circle, and circles are defined by a center point, right? And then all the points are then on the circle are a fixed distance from the center, which is called the radius, right? That's R, R is the radius. Uh, I mean, based in what we actually observe about the real world. So this is like kind of, um, so like the 360 degrees was like a man-made object Radians are more closely linked with kind of what the, the kind of natural phenomenon is, right? So things like pi, like the idea that pi keeps popping up in a lot of measurements means that to me that it's kind of like more fundamental to the world. Same with like the number E, the reason why we use this natural constant is like it's just this number that kept popping up when people would study things, right? So it is this naturally occurring number that repeats in a lot of different um, places. Okay, so that's a great question, but that's what I would say. Um, so I have this radius, and it turns out when people were studying, kind of trying to figure out how the radius was connected to the circumference of the circle, right? They noticed when the radius got bigger, the circumference got bigger. Again, this kind of just relational pattern noticing. When the radius is bigger, the circumference is bigger. When the radius is smaller, the circumference is smaller, right? And it turns out if I have an angle, let's say I have, we measure angles like this way on this unit circle. Let's say I have this interior angle here, right? And I have this arc on the circle. S is called the arc length, meaning the length of this arc. It turns out radians, the length of this arc is just directly proportional to the radius if you measure in this angle measure, in this kind of nice angle. Is this okay? So people defined one radian as the angle measure. Let's do this here. There's the radius. If this arc has the same length as the radius, this angle is called one radian. It is the angle measure that makes the arc the same length as the original radius. Okay? There are two pi radians in a circle. That is the same statement as saying there are 360 degrees in the circle, right? In two different units of measure, right? So it's just a different way to measure, but it is the way we use to measure angles in trig in calculus. So we do not use degrees in this class, like you should be able to go back and forth, but if you're not giving answers in radians, there will be a deduction because you have to start to learn to think and work in this other world. Okay, and the only way we do that is through practice. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're going to convert a couple things to make sure that we know these common angles. So um, two pi is the same thing as 360 degrees. People normally use pi is equal to 180 degrees as the conversion factor. So let's say I'm thinking about an angle, so 90 degrees, in radians, I multiply this by pi radians, this is dimensional analysis, divided by 180 degrees, right? 90 divided by 180, because they're just, because 180 is double, it should be one half. So this is either one half pi, or we usually write this as pi over two radians. So 90 degrees and pi over 2 are the same exact measurement, but in this class we have a preference, strong preference for pi over 2. Mostly because I think you all know degrees and we have to kind of learn other stuff in this class. Okay, so can you at your table do the same sort of conversions for, let's do 60 degrees and 30 degrees and 45 degrees.
So figure out what these are in fraction form, please. No decimals and no calculators. Okay, so 60 degrees, 60 goes into 180, <clears throat> sorry, three times, so this should be pi over three. 30 goes into 186 times, so this should be pi over six. And 45 goes into 180, I think about that because 45 is half of 90, so there are four, should be four copies of 45 hiding inside of 180, so it should be pi over four, is this okay? So these are the main these are the main angle measures that we'll use in right triangle trig. <clears throat> okay, so now like that's the world of measurement that we're going to use, and now we'll actually talk about kind of trig. So original trig, kind of the original right triangle trig. Came from this sort of observation. If I have two triangles. two right triangles and I'm looking at this angle and I'm looking at this angle. <clears throat> Let's pretend this is a right triangle because it's very, okay. Right? Okay. So I have these two triangles. And what people notice in this triangle here on the left is that the, if the angle got bigger then the length of this side got bigger and when you uh, kind of closed this thing and made the angle smaller, the length of this side got smaller. That's it, right? It's a very direct relationship. They're like, hey, can I figure out if there's a formula between like, if I knew I changed the angle this much, can I figure out how much this side changes? That is the very fundamental thing of trig, is to kind of convert from this angle measure to a length of side measure, or to go from the length of the side and figure out the angle one of those to kind of go back and forth between those two worlds. So they defined, humans defined six trig functions that represented this relationship. And it turns out it's a pretty direct relationship. It's just like more complicated than x squared. x squared is real nice because we just know how to do it. Sine and cosine and these trig functions are harder because we either need um, a calculator to do it or some other um, form. So six trig functions, and I'm going to write this here. It's I'm going to do six trig functions based on right triangle trig. So if I have this triangle, and let's say this is the angle I'm talking about. <clears throat> 
from this angle theta, this side is called the opposite side. This side is called the adjacent side. And what side is opposite the right angle? What's this one here? Hypotenuse. Okay. So then the six trig functions of which we normally use three, our sine is the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Okay, these are the three main trig functions. There are three more that are called the reciprocal trig functions. Which are cosecant theta. Uh, which is just the hypotenuse over the opposite side. So this is 1 over sine. Secant theta, which is the hypotenuse over the adjacent side. This is 1 over cosine. And then cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite side, or 1 over tangent theta. So and this is also a list we routinely call this kind of list of equations the reciprocal identities. And we use them when we're working with trig um, functions or equations that we need to solve or when we think about what the graphs of these might look like. So, and if you've ever done right triangle trig, uh, you just kind of, so let's do an example. Let's do, like, let's just find these six trig functions. So let's say I have, let's do uh, a three, four, five right triangle. How's that sound? And here's the angle theta. So we find sine of theta, cosine of theta. Find all six t uh, functions, will you please? So sine of theta should be, let's do one together, should be opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite side that I'm going to label right here is 4. The hypotenuse is 5, so sine of theta is 4 fifths. Like that is the entirety of the definition of sine. Is this okay? Like it's really a ratio of the sine. So find these other six trig functions and talk about them with your group. Check with your group. Okay, so sine should be four fifths, cosine three fifths, tangent four thirds, cosecant five fourths, secant five thirds, and cotangent three fourths. Is this okay? 
Is this what everybody got? Okay. Okay. Good. So I have these, um, and and these work very well once you establish these relationships kind of either figure out what, like, if you put in this this um, kind of relationship to your calculator, we could figure out what the angle is, like we would be, your calculator would be able to tell us, okay? And so, no calculator, so we're just gonna do this. I agree. Okay, so, so then we use special right triangles that we know specifically the relationship between the length of the sides and the angles to try and figure out this relationship more fully, right? So it's very hard to do this for a general triangle. You need your calculator. For very specific triangles, we know what these relationships look like. So those two triangles, do y'all remember two special right triangles? 45, 45 right triangles and 30, 60 right triangles, okay? So I'll draw those for you. And the, like these relationships come from the Pythagorean theorem. Like Pythagorean theorem is insanely useful in so many places. So 45, 45 right triangle. What's the angle measure in radians for 45 degrees? Pi over four. So, and all of these will have a hypotenuse of one because I'm going to stick them on the um, unit circle pretty soon. So, if the hypotenuse is one, this side is the square root of two over two, and this side is the square root of two over two. For a 30, 60, 90 triangle, Thirty degrees being pi over six, sixty degrees being pi over three, and again the hypotenuse is one. This short side across from thirty degrees is one half, and the long side across from sixty degrees is square root of three over two. And I'm saying, like, these are very easy to generate using just Pythagorean theorem. So we knew this, so we want to kind of, like, define this relationship, and then we have these special triangles for which we know something very kind of concrete. And so people use this to generate all kinds of other angles. So when we get to properties, we'll talk about the double angle identity or half angle identity, which people use to get to, like, the relationship for a 15 degree angle or the relationship for 120 degrees or they used all of these properties and identities that we'll talk about to really generate these. Like in this case, kind of the history is moot. Like we have calculators, you can plug sine of like 30 degrees in and figure out what the what it is, right? Okay. So, and it turns out like kind of this, um, Right, triangle trig is very limiting and it limits the ways that we can think about trig functions. So we put this on, the other place we use a lot of angles is on circles. So we put this on something called the unit circle. Is this okay? We don't like the unit circle? Super. I was like, that was a serious response from the crowd about the unit circle. I'm sorry. No, oh, I need a bigger circle. Hold on. I need a way bigger circle than this. Okay, the unit circle. I'm sorry, we might as well just do, we might as well just do this because it's not going away. The unit circle is a circle of radius one, that's why it's called unit, and center at zero, zero, right? So radius is one. Somebody else is listening to music in their class. I don't know what y'all signed up for. 
And the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. If you remember, like, circle, the equation of the circles, but that's kind of the um, most basic form of the circle, okay? Okay. On the, on the circle, we measure this, hold on, I'm going to, kind of out and to the right is called kind of the fundamental um, place that we start. And then angles are measured in a counterclockwise direction. So let's say I'm going to put an angle on here like this. So let's say this is the angle pi over 6 corresponding to 30 degrees. It's from a counterclockwise direction from this red line, right, is this, is this measurement. If I go in the other direction, I can go in the clockwise direction. I'm sorry. I can go in the clo this clockwise direction, but then these angles are negative. So that would be a negative of angle of negative pi over six. Just for this is just convention. There's zero reason for this. We just decided this was the way it was. Is that okay? okay. Again, there's a lot of godlike stuff going on in the math department. I don't know why it is like that, but we're, we just declare things like this all the time. Okay. So it's like this. So when people want to know, so then the question is, there's a kind of a triangle. I'm going to erase this negative piece because I want to kind of just look at this pi over six piece. There's a triangle that sits right here that now if this angle interior angle is 30 degrees this angle over here is 60 degrees and here is my right angle right then the hypotenuse of this triangle is one because i am a unit circle so the hypotenuse is right here and then i know what this length on the bottom is square root of three over two from this special right triangle that I know. And the height here is one half, which means when we think about it in the xy plane that the coordinates of this point are the point square root of three over two comma one half. So this is me thinking about this as an xy point. Is this okay? Okay, good. If I think about this as an xy point, it means I have kind of six new definitions of these in terms of x and y instead of terms of opposite over adjacent. They're the same definition. So if you like opposite over adjacent, you could just think of this not as xy but opposite over adjacent. But then in this case, sine of theta Tell me what sine of theta would be here. One half or just the y value, right? Because I made this denominator one. Like I have made this so that my life is easier. Is that okay? So all those things where I had these ratios, now I'm like, man, I don't like having these denominators. Nobody likes fractions, really. So this thing is just y. It means on the unit circle, cosine theta is just x. And tan theta is just y over x. Or, really, sine over cosine. So we have these, I'm going to move this up maybe to this other side. But we have these definitions. Is this okay? Okay. So I'm going to give you this. Don't, like, that's fine. I don't mind grumbling, actually. Math sometimes deserves a little. And you will still learn in your circle. I 
Okay. Woo. Okay. So is this okay? So you guys have. Let me see if I can pull up. Let me see if I have this somewhere. I think I have a blank unit circle. Okay, so here I'm going to pull this thing up. And the one we just did is right here. Is this is what we just did was pi over 6, right? and it's 30 degrees and then this is a height of one half so that goes in the y space and square root of three over two for the x space and again i'm thinking of these x y's always as cosine and sine okay Then this angle, I'm just going to tell you the angle in degrees, but these come, this angle is 45 degrees, that's pi over 4 radians. And then from those special right triangles, again, like I'm picturing this kind of triangle that sits and is cut it right there, where I just drop this side down, but the two sides there were square root of 2 over 2 and square root of 2 over 2. Um, and this last one here is 60 degrees. So we can't, we use these like special triangles to like structure this unit circle. That's why they're like this. 60 degrees is pi over three. And then now I have a short side on the X axis and this long side, it's kind of like a short but tall triangle. So like here right there's that triangle and so this x value is one half and that's uh and then the y value is square root of three over two okay when i get up here to 90 degrees that's pi over two and we, we know that point i don't have to do any special there's no special triangles that point is zero on the x-axis and one on the y-axis like it's straight up, right? And let's fill in this one over here too, this uh, kind of east point. So it's zero degrees, zero radians, and that point is one zero. Okay. Um. So I'm going to keep working my way around. So this continues to count. They're kind of like, there's a counting by pi over sixes 
and accounting by pi over uh, fours that we'll look at. But so this next angle right here is another 30 degrees. So it's part of this, right? So all these middle angles are on the 45. Um, and then all these, these other ones are 30 degrees apart. So right in here is 30, 30, 30. So another 30 degrees from 90 gives me 120 degrees. Now we didn't do that conversion, but I count starting here, you can start to learn how to count in radians, and this is pi over 6, 2 pi over 6 is right here, which is the same thing as pi over 3, 3 pi over 6 is right here, and this is 4 pi over 6, which is the same thing as 2 pi over 3. So if you have never kind of counted in radians, that's one thing that you might think. I do that a lot to kind of figure out where we are uh, because I don't have the unit circle memorized in the same way that I did when I was like y'all's age. My brain has glowed considerably. But 120. And now I still have this same triangle. Do you see how it's the same red triangle that I drew on the other side? So I still know what this thing looks like. Now I'm going in the negative x direction. So this should be negative one half, but positive square root of three over two. So all of the x values here in this quadrant should be now negative. This next one is another, is 45 degrees from 90, so that's 135. Uh, let's see, that's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. This should be 3 pi over 4. And then again, this should be a negative square root of 2 over 2, still using those lengths from the 45, 45 right triangle. There. It's okay? Questions? Okay, then let's do one more, then I'll have y'all fill the rest in and we can check next week because I want to make sure that we have time to talk about the syllabus and for any questions that you have. So this next one, another 30 degrees from this 120 should be 150 degrees. This one was 4 pi over 6, so I should be at 5 pi over 6 right now, which doesn't reduce. And then again, I'm going, this is my long side, so it's negative square root of 3 over 2, and the height should be 1 half. There is a ton of symmetry in this unit circle, so if you kind of say, like, that point should match this point over here, they're kind of buddies on either side of this unit circle, so it should just be the negative of that. And then down here, I get to 180 degrees, that's just pi, that was our conversion factor that we used, right? And that point is negative 1 and 0 height on the y-axis. Is this okay? Okay. So fill in, can, like I'll have y'all do this for homework, although also if you get stuck, like you, please come see me, but kind of think through these special right triangles and fill in this third quarter where both x and y should be negative and then this fourth quarter which in which just y should be negative on this right side. Is this okay? Questions? Okay. Okay, there were a couple things that we didn't quite get to on the unit circle. I just want to make sure you could do a little practice with it once you had created it. So also if you have had trouble with any of these Here's a filled in unit circle and I'll post it also. I mean, this thing is all over the internet. It's not like I'm giving you anything. Like you can know what Google is like. Um, so I'm going to then show you how this appears. We use it kind of like a lookup table in some ways um, where, but you just know, need to know how to read this kind of table. So an example problem but one example problem might be to find, uh, let's just say I'm going to find sine of 4 pi over 3, right? 
So this is just a direct lookup problem. I'm going to identify where sine of 4 pi over 3 is, or I'm going to identify where 4 pi over 3 is. And then I have to remember which one of these numbers in the parentheses if it's either one. So I'll remind you that the x value is cosine and the y value is sine, right? So once I go over to 4 pi over 3, the sine is this y value. So then my answer that I'll write down is negative square root of 3 over 2, right? And again, 4 pi over 3 is the angle. This negative square root of 3 over 2 is kind of the length, the height or like uh, of this, um, the y value of this embedded triangle given a directionality relative to the origin. Okay? Okay. So some of those are direct. Uh, if you're asked, for example, for tangent of one of these, then usually people just compute that, right? Because tangent is sine over cosine of 4 pi over 3 over cosine of 4 pi over 3, right? So I have that, so I'll just get, and then you have to reduce it. So I'll get negative square root of 3 over 2, and then negative 1 half. We'll do a little fraction work here. Negative square root of 3 divided by 2 times, and then I multiply it by the reciprocal, right? So hold on, I'm going to write this as a division problem first. So really the previous line is this division problem. Do you remember when we divide fractions, we multiply, we keep this first fraction the same, we change the division sign to multiplication, and we multiply by the reciprocal of the second number, right? Okay, so I multiply this. The negatives um, multiplied together will be positive. The twos cancel, so this should be, just be square root of 3 as this final solution of tangent of 4 thirds pi. Okay? Okay. Um, sometimes the values that you're looking for are not really labeled on this particular unit circle. So I have one that's, let's say, sine of 11 pi over 2, and that's not here. But so we have to do this sort of counting. Now, pi over 2, if I'm going to count 11 options, I'm going to go, I'm counting in the positive direction, which is counterclockwise. This here is 1 pi over 2, then 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2. I'm going to keep counting. Then there's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I go around again. 10. And here is 11 pi over 2. You can keep going around. This is what, if you are familiar with the graphs, leads to the periodic nature of these sine functions. We just keep going around. So the sine of 11 pi over 2 is the same thing as the sine of 3 pi over 2. Is that okay? So I'm going to count maybe one more time. I'm going to start here at 0 radians. And then the first jump is here by pi over 2, and that gives me 1 pi over 2. Then I go again. There's another jump, 2 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, and I'm back here. Okay? Now, I'm going to go around another time. So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? One more time. 9, 10, 11. Is this okay? So I get... That sine at 11 pi over 2 really should be negative 1. This y value at that kind of south pole of this unit circle. Okay? Um, let's do another one. I might erase some of this these markings on here, though. <clears throat> okay. So when I have, like, let's say, sine of, mm, oh, let's do negative 3 pi over 2. 
Uh, let's do a different one because I just counted by pi as over two. So let's do. Um, I'll do negative five pi over four. How's that? Okay. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to start at zero radians. I'm counting by pi over four, which is 45 degrees. So I have to go this far every time, right? So there's. And I have to go in this direction, clockwise direction, because it's negative, and that's where negative angles come from on the unit circle. So I, there's one, two, three, four, and I'm five here. So this three pi over four and negative five pi over four share the same sine and cosine values. This is not the same angle, it's a different angle, but they share the same sine and cosine values. So the sign of this will be, it looks like, positive square root of 2 over 2. Is that okay? Um, Let's do, I'm going to do one more. I'm just looking at the example problems that I'm going to assign. Let me do a couple more, actually. But let me erase most of this because I just need a little bit more room. And we need to, I need to be able to kind of reference this unit circle. <clears throat> so I'm going to do a couple more problems just to make sure this is okay. And you'll feel... Like you have at least a place to start on the homework. Sometimes the homework is challenging. Um, but we didn't quite get to this in class. Okay, so let's do one problem that looks like this. Some of the problems will look like, let's do sine of 45 degrees plus cosine um, of pi over 3. So I have to identify now two different angles. There's 45 degrees and the sine is square root of 2 over 2. And I have to add it to cosine of pi over 3, which is here, and cosine is 1 half. So these have the same denominator, so I can just add them together over that. So I'll get 1 plus the square root of 2. And that's it. That's the exact answer. There's no calculator, so you should not change that into anything else. Is that okay? Okay. So we'll do some, this will do, uh, help you do a little practice with um, adding fractions, although most all of these have um, a denominator of two if they're not at the like north, south, east, west poles. So um, that kind of makes it nice. And so the final one is find all six trig values function values. Um, and let's say this is for, let's do this for 5 pi over 6. I want to make sure you know how to generate these other values. Um, okay, so 5 pi over 6, let me erase and figure out where we are working. So 5 pi over 6 is here, right? And so I can read sine and cosine right off of here. So cosine theta, or not theta, cosine of 5 pi over 6 is just negative square root of 3 over 2. Sine of 5 pi over 6 is just 1 half. Okay? Now, tangent is sine over cosine. So I'll just take this 1 half and divide it by, divide it by negative square root of 3 over 2. And I'll do that the same way. 1 half times, and I have to flip this second one, negative 2 over the square root of 3. The 2's cancel, and I get negative 1 over the square root of 3. This needs to be rationalized, so you multiply top and bottom because um, to do division with radicals, we actually um, just multiply them so there are no more radicals in the denominator. That's the convention. 
So we'll do a little bit of work like this. So I'll get square root of 3 over, and then on the bottom, square root of 3 times square root of 3 is just 3, and I should have a negative sign. Okay? Okay, now I need to find, let's say, secant of 5 pi over 6, which is 1 over cosine. So it is just, so it's 1 over cosine, which is the same thing as just flipping <clears throat> this and so I want to say that it's the same as going back up here to cosine and flipping the denominator up to the numerator and the numerator down to the denominator. So this will be negative 2 over the square root of 3 is this reciprocal relationship. So again, I have to rationalize this. So multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So I get negative 2 square roots of 3 over 3 as the secant value. Um, cosecant of 5 pi over 6 is 1 over a sine of 5 pi over 6, which is just, since sine is 1 half, again, I just flip these. Top to bottom, bottom to top, so this is just 2. And then cotangent of 5 pi over 6 is um, 1 over the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Right? Um, so... Um, it, or you can also do it. Sometimes it's easier. I rationalized the um, tangent of 5 pi over 6 before, so sometimes this is a long way around. Um, but I'll show you maybe how, what I would do in this case. Um, I would restart with cotangent um, being cosine over sine is maybe the identity that I would use. That Sokotoa right, that cotangent is adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over opposite, the opposite side. Um, so, and in this case, this gives me um, the cosine of this angle. I'm going to look back again to make sure that I'm not, is negative square root of 3 over 2, or negative, yeah, negative square root of 3 over 2, and I'm dividing by 1 half square root of 3 over 2 times 2, these cancel, and I get negative square root of 3. Okay, and I just kind of know that's going to happen since I had to rationalize the tangent, so um, that's maybe the fastest way, but um, there are other ways too. Okay, um, so you'll have a few homework questions like this. Let me know if you have any questions.